Yes, a very warm welcome to you and thank you for joining us on Health and Wellness. My name is Zaitun Ali and today we are starting this show in a very calm way. I was meditating here with my guests, so you can't just believe what we're going to talk about. The topic of discussion is sound healing. Have you ever heard of that? Have you ever? And right here in studio, I have Narissa Albai. I said it well, Alibai. Yep. Okay, yes, she is a sound healing artist and she's coming to just tell us the benefits of all these things that you're seeing here. Don't worry, we'll come to it. And we also have Tamara Britain. Welcome to the show. She is, a, the yoga, she is a yoga trainer and she's also the founder of Kilifi Wellness. The co-founder or just the founder? Co-founder of the Khalifi Wellness Festival. Good. Yes. They, they sent me a whole lot of titles. You guys, I'm going to read them, by the way. So, Narissa <laughs> Alba. Let me say, she is a sound healing artist, therapist and teacher. Also a founder of um, the Sound Healing Africa. And co-founder of Conscious Kenya. Wow. <laughs> Good. Tamara Britain. Let's see. Oh, she loves travel. She loves adventure. Anything about wellness, that is you, Tamara. Absolutely. Ah, great. Wellness great and adventure, have. yes. You've oh, got the wow. two things. <laughs> she also does tours and travel, so you can hit her up later on. Welcome to the show. Thank you. What has brought us here today is sound healing. Yes. And we are going to, t to talk about it, what it is exactly. But even before we start, remember the SMS line and the WhatsApp line actually is 0759-434389. You can just talk to us, comment about what we're going to talk about. And they've come with goods, goodies, goodies, and they're going to give us. What do you have, Tamara, for the, for the viewers? I have some amazing free giveaways. Yes. I have two flasks. You can carry your water, carry your tea, carry your coffee. Mm -hmm. They are branded Caribou Kenya, which is my company, and Exclusive Ethiopia, which is my other company, and Yoga and Wellness in East Africa. Wow. Two very pretty flasks. And I also have two T-shirts from the Khalifi Wellness Festival. Okay, this camera. Yes. <laughs> Two t-shirts from the Khalifi Wellness Festival. Wow. So yes, two flasks and two t-shirts. Today it's all about wellness. And I can't even forget my feet. So a very thank you, thank you, thank you to Lugo Collections for now dressing us. I'm looking stunning. Everything cutesy, demure, yeah? For all your needs bespoke, um, you can just hit them up at Lugo Collection for both male and female suits. So make sure. And they also have a physical store at uh, Moktadada. That is um, in Nairobi CBD next to Jiva. So you can find their contacts and hit them up. Karibu, Karibu Kenya, Karibu to our show. Yes. So talk about sound healing. I'll start with you, Narisa. And mm -hmm. you've been doing it for how long? I've been uh, specializing in sound healing for the last seven years now. Seven years. Yeah. What is it about? So sound healing is uh, using sound and vibration mm -hmm. to harmonize, balance the mind, the body, the spirit. It's um, a form of wellness that. Yeah. Um, takes into account physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. Tamara, and yeah. also before that, we had done yoga with you. <laughs> you also do sound healing? Um, I don't. Okay. I don't do sound healing. I do love it. I've attended several of Nerissa's and other sound healers. It yeah. is a really special, um, it's a really special healing modality. In fact, what Nerissa and I have recently put together is um, a company called Bespoke, mm -hmm. which in fact we haven't mentioned before, but this is a concierge service for wellness in Kenya. So if your organization, your company, your yes. hotel, your safari camp uh, would like to offer this to your employees or your guests, you can call us and we offer not only yoga and sound healing, mm -hmm. but all different wellness modalities. Okay. So today we, we just want Today to we're specializing in on, on sound, sound healing. healing. Exactly. Okay. So how does it benefit us in terms of wellness? So many benefits. Um, yes. So I can list a few of them. It's a lot. A <laughs> Please list them all. List them all. <laughs> well, so yeah. it's definitely a stress reliever. Yeah. Um, it's very, very relaxing. It can help you get into deep states of meditation, uh, transcendental states, clarity, balance. Um, it can help you on the physical level. If you have um, actually any physical ailments or pains in the body, they can actually be released. Okay. It helps to harmonize the body systems. Um, various um, mental health conditions or issues that we deal with on day-to-day -day life, anxiety, depression, insomnia, mm -hmm. um, sound healing helps with this, um, helps to relieve these. Um, it's, it's something where you bring your whole body into a state of, of harmony, that feeling. And 
One more thing I should mention is also emotional yeah. release. So quite often if you've stored some emotions in certain part of you or you need to process them or release even things that have been stored from a while ago or more recently, it's a very gentle way to work through and release baggage that you walk out feeling lighter. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's healing and it's wellness as well. You can see, you know, which side that you're coming for when you go for a session. Okay. And probably yeah. even Tamara can add on to this because you've done yoga before and you've also done sound healing. So is there a connection or how do you feel when you do both of them? Um, I think they're quite different. I think for me, yoga is uh, meditation through movement. Yes. So you're focusing on different movements and in that way, because you're in the present moment, meditation is really bringing yourself into the present moment. So for me, yoga is a form of movement meditation. You're focusing on each pose that you're doing. You're concentrating on that. You're releasing anything around you. Um, and in the same way, sound healing, it brings you into the present moment. Okay. Um, but this is not through movement. You're, you're still when you're listening uh, to the sound healing. Which one is better for you? <laughs> oh, I love them both. I love them both. Obviously, you know, yoga is my passion. So, uh, yoga is my passion. So, yes, I yeah. do. I do love move, movement okay. um, and dance and all that. But lying down and listening to the vibration—you can feel the vibrations going through you. When when um, Narissa will show us when yes. she, when she does it a bit later, but you feel the vibrations in your body, and it's extraordinary. Okay, how does it work? Um, how does it work? Okay, yeah. so there's a few different ways in which sound healing works and it also depends on in which way we're working with it. So when we're in a personal session, we will actually place the balls either on you or around you. And in this case, the vibrations actually go directly into the body. Mm -hmm. And the, as the sound waves move through your body, mm -hmm. they're shaking up. Um, the cells and uh, releasing and loosening any blockages. Okay. And when the balls are near you or around you, one thing they work with is on the physical level. Um, and physically, and I'm getting a bit into the science of it. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> if, that's, if that's okay. okay. Um, so they actually, there's, there's something called resonance uh, frequencies of different you know, cells, organs, tissues, fluids. Mm -hmm. And these balls, especially the ones uh, that you can see over here, yeah. these are the, um, the ones made of brass. Um, these are known as the Himalayan singing bowls. These ones actually um, produce various um, overtones. So some of these mm -hmm. will resonate with the frequencies of the different organs, tissue cells in the body, and this is what brings them into balance and harmony. So sometimes you don't even have the ball touching you, but you'll feel something moving in your body. Oh. This, is, this is how it happens. There, there's a bit more to the science of it, but I don't know but if you want me to tell you, you more. Why yeah. do you place it on the chest and uh, probably on the, on the tummy? So we why can, here, the we, upper body? Yeah, we can place it on different parts. So if I was okay. to do a full session for you, okay. I will actually place them on your back, on your legs. Um, it's, over here, we actually have the, um, the central axis of the body is also aligned with um, the chakras or the energy centers. That is now when we get into more of the, um, you know, the Ayurvedic and the yogic philosophy yes. of the energy centers. So those are also in the center. Mm -hmm. And this is also where the major organs lie. Okay. So it's, it's really, really beneficial to place them directly on these areas. Okay. Yeah. Tamara, have you been through a full session of this? I have. How is it's, it it's fabulous, it's fabulous. Um, you can, yes, you can feel the vibrations on various parts of your body, but mm -hmm. even, even when it's not on you, even when you're lying near them, you feel the vibrations. Okay, all through. Yeah. Okay, that's nice. Is there scientific evidence that it is actually beneficial to your wellness? Yeah. So, um, interestingly, yeah. um, sound healing is something that has been practiced by many cultures for thousands of years in mm -hmm. different forms in different parts of the world, mm -hmm. including the African continent. So, these, this is what sound healing is famous for. It's these singing bowls, yeah. which originated in the Himalayas. But there's a, lot more, there's a lot more modalities that we can talk about. Um, and now, at this point, science and modern science is actually trying to understand why these wonderful benefits are, are mm -hmm. coming in when we interact with these bowls. So um, I think I talked a little bit about how it works earlier, but yes. something else that, that also happens is something called brainwave entrainment. Um, and this is when the, the brain waves are actually in synchronicity with the waves produced by the bulls. And mm -hmm. there's, there's, I don't know if you've ever heard of binaural beats. Mm -mm. I'm hearing <laughs> it now, please explain more. So <laughs> you, can, you can actually find these on YouTube and a okay. lot of people use them for concentration, for sleep. And it's when you have two different waves 
and the basically the brain then hears the difference of the two waves and okay. it starts to um, move in the same in that exact frequency and this just to make it a bit more accessible yes. brings us into certain levels and states of being that are very relaxing so right now as we're interacting we're probably in the beta state oh right because we're quite alert uh -huh. now when we start relaxing and breathing and meditating we're moving into the alpha state and these are lower frequencies and then we get deeper into the theta state which is usually what happens when we're working with the singing bowls mm -hmm. and getting lower than that is delta and then we get into deep sleep so quite often when you're in one of these sessions you're somewhere in between awake and asleep okay and um there has been scientific research that shows that this is this is something that happens and when you're in this state various things are happening the mm. body is now resting and pro uh, carrying out deep healing um there is um you can often get into a bit of a dream state sometimes. Oh, nice. Um, it's, this is why it's also very relaxing. Yeah. And there has also been um, scientific research that shows um, how it helps to alleviate uh, several mental health conditions. And yeah, there's and a lot a, more to it. From a personal perspective, for the seven years that you've been doing this, how has it changed your life in terms mm. of wellness? Good question. Yeah. <laughs> Completely. Completely. Um, so actually, my my personal journey with the singing bowls, it was a complete shift. I was yes. actually um, in environmental activism, uh, moving towards human rights work. And something actually happened in my life where I, I lost my best friend in 2017. Sorry. And and I was now in grief. And I was I was actually traveling in Asia at the time, trying to process and understand. Mm -hmm. And this is where I encountered my first live sound healing. Wow. And it was, I, I, I went through many modalities, which all of which, uh, many of which helped me, mm -hmm. but the sound healing is what resonated, pun intended, <laughs> with me. Yeah. And when I went for that first session, I was in such a, I went into very, very deep transcendental states of meditation. Mm -hmm. And I had been thinking about getting into it and it was confirmed. And okay. so I then went on to take more sessions, go deeper into it, study it, which I have never looked back. Your pain became your purpose. Yeah. It did. Tamara, <laughs> talking about meditation, I know yours is different. What you enjoy to do is very different. But what is actually the benefit of meditation for your own healing and wellness? Well, just following on from what Narissa was saying, actually, I did want to say that every time I've had a, a sound healing session, I have slept much better. Really? Not, yeah, it, it really does. Um, it, it changes something in, in you. It makes you relax and it makes your sleep much deeper. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's meant to do that. So that's mm. a testimonial. Yeah. That's a good one. <laughs> yeah. It actually helps with, uh, with insomnia. So a lot of people who um, are suffering from insomnia take uh, sound healing sessions to help. Mm. And even off camera, we were talking and we we're saying like um, African culture has not really embraced this. As you're speaking, you went to Asia and uh, actually got to know about it. So how are people here in Africa and Kenya responding to it? Are most of your clients part of uh, Kenyans and, uh, you know, Africans? Yeah, so actually I would say that I work with all demographics nice. of people. Um, and that's, that's actually how I work. I'm very much a community builder. And, yeah. um Actually, sound healing, okay, so first of all, when I started sharing sound healing around seven years ago over okay. here, mm -hmm. it, it was really not very well known. Was, <laughs> the reception people, was not good. No, it, was, it was very curious. No okay. one really knew what it was. And okay. right now, it's getting to be very much more well known. And um, this is actually, uh, it's becoming a bit more of a trend in a way. It's wow. getting very popular. Wow. And this is actually one of the reasons that um, I started this thing called Sound Healing Africa, where we're going to be, you know, making sure that we share, you know, the actual traditions and the science mm -hmm. and paying respect to where, you know, the different traditions came from. Okay. And something that's really important is when you ask about, you know, cultures here and do people, are, do people know about sound healing? Sound healing has been core to actually cultures across Africa for millennia. Yeah. Chanting, mm -hmm. singing, yeah. drums, mm -hmm. nyatiti, oh, mbira, kalimba, kora. All of this is you've sound done, healing. You've done a lot of research. You had to learn about everything. Well, I don't personally play, you know, the chorus. No, but about the sound healing. 
did you go to school? Uh, who trained you when you actually wanted you to become a papa? So how did you learn about all these nitty gritties that you've been talking about? Yeah, so um, when it comes to, so there's different instruments. Okay. And the ones that, you know, are most commonly used and associated with the term sound healing are these um, Himalayan singing bowls. Yes. And now more the gongs, the crystal bowls and other. So for these, um, I had a long search, a very it long is. search. <laughs> yeah, so um, I actually was in different parts of Asia and I was trying out different courses, different teachers, and mm -hmm. it took me a while to find a really good teacher and school and institute because mm -hmm. um, there isn't actually one certifying body in the world mm -hmm. um, for this. So there are mm -hmm. actually offshoots in schools in different places. So now to find a quality teacher is, is not always that easy. Okay. And so when I finally found um, the teacher that I work with, he has founded something called the International Nada Yoga Center, mm -hmm. which is based in Nepal. Mm -hmm. And it is... It's, it's brilliant. He's a wonderful teacher. It teaches you how to, teaches you the spirituality, f helps you find your own power within yourself. It's very meditative, pays respect to the tradition, the spirituality. We work with the science, the music, the philosophy, all of it. Okay. So that's with the singing bowls. And then, you know, the, the flute I've been playing since I was very small. Oh, and it's part of your talent. This is my love. We are, we are also my going love. to hear it. And I, I hope, guys, you remember that... Um, the WhatsApp line is 0759 We still have giveaways for you right here in studio. Please comment. Let me know how you're feeling about this sound healing. You'll get to see us even trying it very soon. But even as before we take the break, Tamara, I wanted you to expound more about meditation and sound healing, how they come together as we do the session, probably in the next part of the, of the show. Well, um, like I said, meditation is really bringing yourself into the present moment yes it's it's not thinking about what happened yesterday not mm. worrying about the past not being nervous about the future you empty your mind of all of that and you're completely in the present so you can do that you can do walking meditation yes. you can focus on an object kind of meditation you can do yoga movement in meditation you can do chanting um, you can do sound healing so they're all forms of bringing you into the present moment. Okay. So they're all forms of meditation. Even mm. sound healing is a form of meditation. Absolutely. Okay. Mm. How is it possible? You know, I remember what happened yesterday. How, how long does it take you for one to just settle down, be in the present, and enjoy now this sound healing? You know, we have a lot going on in our minds. Meditation is difficult. It is. Bringing yourself into the present moment. We've got so many distractions around us. And we all think about something that happened yesterday. Exactly. Or we're worried about something that might happen tomorrow. Or we're excited because we're going somewhere tomorrow. So it, it is really difficult. Yeah. It sounds crazy, but it's difficult to focus on this moment in this time. Uh, so there are lots of techniques for bringing you into that. Okay. Like I said, there's walking meditation. And... and there's also a guided meditation where someone can talk you through mm -hmm. um, either relaxation or bringing you into a, a, a moment or a place. Um, and one technique that a lot of people use, and yoga uses this as well, is breathing meditation. Okay. Focusing on your breath. And there's a lot of different techniques and different ways of breathing to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, I use breathing at the beginning and at the end of my yoga sessions every time okay. to bring people into their body, into the present, trying to, to release anything else before they start. And, and with yoga, you use breath the whole way through. You okay. move on the inhale or you move on the exhale. Um, so that is a form of breathing and moving meditation, okay. just like this is a form of sound meditation. Makes sense. How long does it take a session? A session, mm -hmm. okay, so I guess the sh well, <laughs> it can be as short as 10 minutes, it can okay. be as long as three hours. Mm -hmm. um, it depends. It depends. With the season you're in, uh, how bad you're, you're, you're probably distressed or what, what, does it, what are the factors that contribute to the whole session? I mean, it depends on what someone wants as well. Okay. So sometimes we might even combine a session, do some yoga, uh, physical mm -hmm. asana oh. practice, mm -hmm. and then have some sound healing at the end. At that point, it might be 10, 20 minutes. Okay. Maybe I'm doing a full-on session of, of sound healing. It might be around 45 minutes, but before that, I'll do breathing practice. If it's a one-on-one, -on -one, we'll have a consultation before. Uh -huh. And then the actual... The actual sound part is usually around 45 minutes, but honestly, I can play for hours. So it really depends on <laughs> the person and how it's going. Yeah. Um, how often do you recommend for someone, especially a beginner like me, how often can I do the sound healing? 
There's no too much. Okay. Um, but it's it's not something that you have to do every day. Yeah. Um, it re it's really depends. So on one hand, if you're taking it as a form of wellness, it can be like your monthly massage. It's like a monthly tune up uh, for you to harmonize your body. Yeah. Um, if you're actually trying to work through something a lot deeper mm -hmm. um, or something that you're going through, you might want to do, I might recommend you to go for 10 sessions uh, a bit closer to each other and then we can wean off. Okay. So it's, there's no hard and fast about it. And Tamara's um, response to it was like almost instant in terms of she got deep sleep and good quality sleep almost instantly. Is it the same for all your clients? Do they give the same response? I think everyone <laughs> responds to it differently. Yeah. And I would say every modality is different and some people resonate more with one or another. And every sound healing session is also different. Okay. So in, in one session, you might wake up feeling more alert. Another one, you might feel more relaxed. Mm -hmm. Maybe today you feel like you've released some physical pain. Tomorrow you feel like something emotional. Mm -hmm. The next day you have some kind of a visual and insight in your meditation. Okay. So it's different each time. Um, and people have, you know, reported different, um, different effects and come for very different reasons. And you're also going to mention about the do's and don'ts, you know, uh, the, after we come back from this break, because before we engage in this, we need to know, is there something that I should not have done before coming to this sound healing, like eating too much like I did? <laughs> <laughs> well, ideally, you are not having too heavy a stomach, but it's okay. Oh, okay. So I'll, I'll just try, right? Yeah, you'll be fine. Okay. <laughs> Guys, the social media handles at KTN Home underscore, that is on Instagram and on Twitter, that is X, and at KTN Home Facebook. Find me on Ali underscore Zaitun. In case you have any questions, 0759 434389. I still have your goodies. So we're taking a short commercial break. We'll be right back with more. So don't touch that dial.